Hello, my name is George Agabov. I work at Seracal, we are partner of HK, and we took significant part in development of Cardano SL as cryptocurrency. Today I want to talk about several topics, about challenges that we um, encountered while developing Cardano SL and a uh, particular part of Cardano SL which is called Curve. So, uh, as a first step, I want to drive you through uh, how models are structured in Cardano SL uh, in abstract and a little bit more detail. So, for a start, Cardano SL is split to three uh, significantly um, distinguished parts, which are core, wallet, and networking. So, when development just started, we didn't have this distinguishing, but then the code base grew, and at some point uh, we understood that communication and how nodes converse to one another, it's really like a, some separate functionality which is hard to uh, write in the same place as you when you describe logical blockchain. So that's how we uh, that, that's how networking code net, networking part emerged, and core which is logic, uses networking. Also, at later stage, we started to, de uh, to develop not only um, the logic of cryptocurrency itself, but also some interfaces which allow user to do some meaningful actions, like sending transactions and so on. And this is wallet. So, and wallet uses core. So this is a basic distinction. And uh, I will talk mostly about this side of things. So, uh, and if we talk about challenges, they can be divided into several categories. And first category I want to talk about is um, basically complexity and growth of code base. When we just started this project, this, it contained less than 30 modules, uh, which already provided some functionality of blockchain. Uh, th they were an implementation of Ouroboros with some additional uh, possibilities for one to send transactions, so on. It was fairly simple, mostly a proof of concept implementation. But then as uh, development uh, went further for, uh, for us to bring this to uh, total working cryptocurrency, we had to add a, lit uh, a lot of functionalities to it, like um, delegation, like proper randomness uh, generation, which is called for historical reasons uh, SSC. Um, update system was also another part. And, uh, and as you add all of these uh, functionalities, you start to realize that uh, your code grows really, really fast. So from uh, 30 models, we uh, quickly went to 100, and then we started to approach 100 and, and have. And uh, the problem was that you couldn't really uh, reason well about it when it, it was just uh, so many modules. So at that stage, we, appro uh, we approached a number of refactorings. We split our code base to several packages. And that's uh, what you will see if you will visit uh, our repository now. So I will just uh, throw a number of examples. Uh, for example, we have uh, package called core, which is like a core of core of this cryptocurrency. Uh, it uh, contains in itself uh, several definitions, uh, some abstract definitions of blockchain, some very basic types like transaction and address, what is address, what is transaction. Um, and uh, it's some, if, you, if you read it, you will have already a quite good understanding of, um, of our, our architecture behind this cryptocurrency. Uh, then we have, uh, for instance, uh, US module, uh, which is uh, for update system. Uh, and uh, update system uses uh, types and definitions from core, uh, but uh, provides uh, specific implementations, uh, specific uh, 
like re re uh, refinements of these types uh, which are suitable uh, exactly for uh, update system functionality. Also, if we put uh, if we consider block processing, which is uh, a very complex procedure because our structure are uh, quite uh, enhanced, uh, it's also not, not doable to have all this functionality written in just one package. So we put a lot of abstractions there. Uh, we have abstract definition for block processing, uh, but concrete implementation of block processing with regards to update system, the, uh, it, these definitions also live in this package. And uh, this actually solves uh, the problem of complexity growth of code base. Uh, and now, you, if you, as, as I said, if you visit uh, Cardano Cell Repository, you will see a number of modules, and in uh, readmes for these modules, you will see definition of what a Z and Z module did. So that was one challenge. Uh, second challenge I want to talk about, and perhaps the more significant one, was a gap between uh, research paper, robots, and uh, real-life uh, application, which is cryptocurrency. So. In research paper, you consider very basic properties, uh, and uh, you tr uh, you build consensus upon these properties. But think uh, the essence is that uh, you don't define uh, things to an extent that they are actually used in real life. For example, transaction sending is uh, really simplified in uh, research paper, but and it's uh, it's not even defined in proper way. Uh, but when uh, but uh, you it's it's pointless to have cryptocurrency without transaction signing. So, and uh, it's actually interesting how one would approach this. So initially we just uh, sit sat in on the table and had some discussions of how what, what validation what are validation rules of transactions. We developed a number of proof of concepts. Then we were working on some specifications and uh, refined that implementation. Uh, then when we encountered problem of validating that what was developed at that time was proper. We started to write tests, we understood that our in, uh, specifications were imprecise to many extents and that also contributed much uh, to definitions. And uh, it, actually it, it was a whole, pro <laughs> a whole process, a whole framework of development uh, d defined that way, like, uh, which is already par partly described uh, in other talk by Duncan. Second category of uh, difficulties uh, in the gap between research paper and uh, real life application. And uh, this can be divided into two groups. First, it's uh, ambiguity of research paper, which means that uh, if we consider Ouroboros, it doesn't define up to a certain extent uh, many things like transaction processing. It just de they're just defined into on the basic level because it's uh, not, not considered by consensus, actually. And uh, second uh, part of challenges is um, that we need to add some additional functionalities that uh, are not even uh, that uh, consensus is not ever aware of. So let's first talk about ambiguity. I will just uh, draw, draw uh, two examples of uh, where ambiguity comes into place. Uh, first good example is uh, stake and balance. Uh, research paper doesn't uh, have uh, definition of uh, stake in any way is different from balance. So if uh, some user has some money on his account, this is basically his stake. Uh, his uh, like, and, uh, proportion of his stake relatively to whole stake of system uh, it reflects his right to participate in block creation and so on. Uh, but uh, for for many, uh, several particular reasons, you just can't have stake uh, and balance defined as the same thing, uh, because if uh, if you consider what what these two things actually are, 
balance is uh, values that, can, that you can transfer on the system, which uh, is like just money you pay to somebody. And stake is uh, right for participation. And if we con uh, consider concepts of delegation, it actually uh, delegation is uh, a mechanism to uh, transfer your stake without transferring balance. And uh, when you come further on all of these definitions, you will understand that these two things are actually different. And furthermore, uh, if you consider how these things are actually implemented, uh, you will see that difference is even more um, deep. So, uh, how balance is defined? How, how we exchange balance? We define transaction, which is number of inputs, number of outputs, and you have transaction outputs of one transaction fuse into inputs of different transactions which are also defined this way. And transaction output is actually defined as pair of address and coin where address is identity of person on system uh, and uh, coin is amount of uh, money you want to, uh, to send to that person. And uh, if we consider how address is defined, uh, it's like common notion in cryptocurrency space that uh, you, have it not, uh, you have it as hash of public key. And in the simplest definition, you can uh, use uh, the very same public key for staking. So if you have identity with, with balance, uh, then you use the same identity for staking. That, that person uh, holds it, that money, he has this address. Uh, you, uh, from, from ledger functionality, you understand uh, that that address is signed that amount of money. Uh, but uh, there is quite a problem. If you consider how you will create blocks, then you will understand that uh, you need to sign blocks with some key. And this key actually reflects uh, your right uh, for staking. So it's uh, sta uh, key associated with stake. But if you sign a block with this key, then you have to reveal this public key. Uh, otherwise, nobody will uh, be able to validate that signature was done indeed by you. Uh, but And this brings you to a security concern that uh, if your signature scheme is broken and you already revealed your public key, then uh, money on, uh, that were held on this address, they are revealed. Uh, and like, uh, cryptocurrency typically approach this by not, uh, by not using address twice. So if you uh, spend money from this address, you spend all money from this address and you don't use this address and one more. But essence here is that if you have some money on such some account, after you create block, you still have this address in place and money are not spent. So there is, this is a, a true security concern. Uh, for that reason, we are inevitably come into situations that we need to have two keys. One is stake key and one is balance key, uh, which are in some way coupled, but they are, uh, they are two different keys. And this is not in any way reflected in paper. And it took uh, some time to actually uh, come up with understanding that these two are essentially different, different things. So, Second example uh, is transaction processing, or as we often call it, uh, TXP. So, basic, uh, so this is question of how you validate the transaction that came to you is actually valid, it's proper transaction. And simple answer will be that you need to check signatures associated with transactions, so you uh, validate that indeed person who sent the transaction uh, was the owner of funds. Uh, second, you check that these funds were not spent before uh, to avoid so-called double spending. Uh, and it's, this, these are concepts quite easy to understand, but not that easy to implement. 
because you have to be very careful about what you do. So just one example that we encountered over the process of development. Uh, if you, uh, all, all funds that are eligible to be spent are stored in so-called UDXO, which is uh, a set of uh, yet unspent uh, transaction outputs. And uh, when you have a transaction, it uh, spends, um, it, 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 it has number of transaction outputs from uh, previous transactions, which can be spent uh, to like other transaction outputs, sorry. Actually, actually these are inputs. Um, and wh what you have to do, you have to check that each such transaction input, uh, it indeed exists in current UTXO. And uh, if you, uh, for a concrete transaction, you can do it in one shot. You can just uh, take each of these inputs and uh, for input for input one, check that it, it is in map. For input two, check that it is in map. It's quite uh, uh, easy process. But if you don't actually modify a map when you uh, take all of these things, you can at some point encounter that you can create a transactions with just the same input. Uh, so one and two are the same thing. And if you implement validation in wrong way, uh, it will be an easy way to hack into the system. Uh, and uh, the only way to approach that thing is to write a proper specification of what you do. That you don't only just uh, check that this transaction output, uh, input uh, was in UTXO and this also, but you also check that when you, uh, when you uh, check for the first transaction input, uh, second transaction uh, input won't be uh, the, the same record as the first. Uh, and yeah, and for those who are interested, uh, you can read a document which will probably be attached to this video. Uh, which describes all the rules we have for transaction processing and you will see that it's actually like a large document and uh, we believe that uh, th that doc document actually describes the flow that and it was reviewed for a number of times by different people to be sure that we check everything that we need to check. So this was about ambiguity. And now we talk about additional functionalities uh, which is uh, second problem in area of gap between research paper and real life application. And two examples here will be delegation and update system. So delegation as it is defined in, in original Ouroboros paper, it's a very simplified delegation and uh, description there, it doesn't um, um, pro provide you a good guidance on how to implement this. And uh, first question was, should we have delegation uh, and uh, de de delegation certificates be posted to blockchain or should, be they, should they be uh, exchanged off-chain? And if you go further uh, to both of these concepts, you will see that one is applicable for one use case, other is applicable for other use case. And you have to think actually uh, what are cons consequence of using one case, other case. And for example, so for delegation, we have uh, two types of delegation certificates, lightweight and heavyweight delegation certificates. And lightweight are these that are not uh, shared on blockchain, heavyweight are stored on blockchain. And interesting, and there are actually interesting properties behind both of them. Uh, second is a little bit better in terms of privacy to some extent, also uh, in terms of uh, blockchain usage. Uh, uh, and heavyweight is uh, better uh, in the sense that you can 
delegate more properly in in uh, in terms of protocol itself uh, in particular with regards to mpc which is a process for generating random number uh, and we also had to go through process of understanding what, what, what is this, what is this, to write down uh, both ideas, to communicate to researchers that they agree that both uh, that, that can be used, that can be used. Also, there was a lot of feedback coming through. Uh, when and when you go through these definitions, you actually st start to refine what is your address because it, at some point you understand that address is not just hash of public key but uh, it also contains it should contain some information about delegation uh, so it's a long process and uh, it was indeed a challenge and another example is update system and for and update system is not uh, it wasn't something that was in any way defined in paper we just uh, were given a task that this cryptocurrency Cardano, it uh, should support update system for users to be updated. And uh, there was actually a, like a broad question, like, but how update system for blockchain sh should be, uh, should look like. And we came up with definitions, uh, what, what, what we call soft fork, what we call head fork. Not, not that we came up, but we looked at how it was defined for different cryptocurrencies. We did a lot of work to uh, understand how to avoid hard forks if uh, you can do something with soft forks we put uh, some more complexity but uh, for the price of being allowed to do more in terms of soft forks uh, and so on and it also was a process that uh, almost everything that we came up w was immediately uh, written down into some sort of uh, specification maybe not well refined just to um, share it with people and uh, for people to ensure that we are doing uh, not, not something um, uh, stupid in the first place and uh, yeah uh, okay so l let's talk a, a, a few words about some other challenges except for this gap so another challenge that you uh, that we started to encounter uh, from the early days, uh, but uh, more as we went further, was performance. When we developed first proof of concept, uh, we didn't put much uh, effort to design networking. So we implemented some basic solutions based on network sockets uh, for nodes to be able to communicate one to other. Uh, and uh, the <laughs> interesting outcome of, of that was that when we uh, launched this uh, proof concept implementation on a cluster of nodes, uh, it worked well for 10 nodes, uh, but for 30 it didn't work well at all. And that was basically because networking wasn't well designed, it was just um, some dr dr drafted implementation just uh, to allow some communication. And uh, I, th I think that, that was historical, the first uh, performance problem that we did uh, see. But as it went further, uh, there was a lot of... Uh, a lot of details as it came into place. For instance, first implementation, it uh, was uh, keeping all the blockchain in memory because it was fast to prototype this kind of thing but it was obvious that we couldn't live a uh, long time with it because uh, blockchain will grow and in some year we'll have more than uh, 500 megabyte for instance and it's not something that you can easily store in it's not efficient and there is no need to store all this stuff in uh, uh, in memory so for that reason we moved to RocksDB database and um, have blockchain store on file system so that was also in, in, in some way related to performance uh, also when we've been developing such future as SHD wallets and actually it's, it's another example when research paper uh, is, uh, there is a gap between research paper as Ouroboros and uh, implementation uh, when we developed uh, this thing, initially specification told one thing, then we launched it, then we saw that it was very expensive uh, in terms of computation, uh, a little bit more expensive than we expected. So we need to refine uh, the specification to put additional bits of information on blockchain. But yeah, so, and it's all, all the way through. And 
interesting, uh, interesting that after we launched cryptocurrency, we <laughs> unsurprisingly saw quite new performance problems which we weren't into much into before, uh, before the launch. Uh, an example is uh, exchanges. So we, when, when we de uh, developed most of um, cryptocurrency, we took a lot, uh, paid a lot of attention to uh, core site. Uh, which uh, where this, uh, we described how full node will uh, pro process things, uh, and we put a little bit less attention to wallet side. Uh, we just ensure that it will work for average user relatively fast and uh, to, to some extent, extent in proper way. But when you, uh, when you start to launch the sync on exchanges, you understand that it's a completely different use case and it uh, requires you uh, completely different performance to put in place. So it's all the way through and we are, we are working out all these problems and we, are, uh, we have now much better solutions. And uh, what are future challenges that uh, we'll encounter now, uh, well, that we encounter now that, and we will encounter rather soon? So, first we need uh, to fix a lot of issues that came from users, uh, which is a uh, consequence of uh, launching uh, the cryptocurrency in real life. So, when we did some testing, we had only, like, t uh, we could test it only to a certain extent, and now we've had so much feedback. And as we process this feedback, uh, we hope Cardano Cell will become uh, m much and much better. After that, we have challenge to roll out the serialization, which will have a ver a very same concerns with uh, refining specifications, uh, with performance. Uh, we it will also require developing number of additional functionalities and uh, re refine existing ones. Um, and yes, and also work on user features and like uh, basically every, uh, every every effort we take is a challenge because it's it's always something new something that you didn't do before so we'll keep you updated thank you for listening to this